Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Young Dead Gaming Reviews. A series where I review, recount, and reminisce the games that I grew up on. As well as decide when or if my son will be growing up on the same games due to extreme violence, suggested themes, or because the game just sucks. Next up, Tomb Raider. Angel of Darkness. Oh shit. Released in June 2003 for the PS2 and PC, Angel of the Darkness is the third follow-up to the saga set up by The Last Revelation and followed by Chronicles. This franchise really didn't know when to quit, huh? Angel of the Darkness went with a more realistic and darker tone, but was plagued with bugs, rushed productions, entirely cut sections, and a completely new engine being that it was a completely new hardware. With overambitions and nearly none of the original team returning for this game, what caused this angel to become fallen? And is there anything worth salvaging in this barren tomb? Well, let's flip on some lights because this game is dark as hell, and let's find out. Yeah, there, it's much better. Help me, Lara. I need you to get something for me. Go on. I'm tracking five. Following the events of Chronicles, Lara Croft is very much alive after being found by Werner von Croy in Egypt. Even with Werner and a whole crew looking for Lara, she says he left her behind. Egypt, Werner. You walked away and left me. I think you're remembering wrong, Lara. After a brief argument and an obnoxious cameraman, Lara finds blood on her hands and is framed for the murder of Von Croy. She does her best to escape from the police, which is quite difficult as they've sent their most highly trained officers after her. She eventually wakes up in an abandoned train car and begins RPGing her way around, speaking with the locals and asking questions. Lara eventually finds out that she needs to speak to a man named Louis Bouchard in regards to a murderer known as the Monstrum, whom she believes killed Von Croy because of his most recent mission to retrieve five obscure paintings. What's most difficult about this game is how fast paced everything is and how so many characters come and go. This is due to the cutting that needed to be done for this game to make its release date. The initial area was supposed to be much larger and filled with characters you would need to revisit. For instance, there is a Chinese herbal shop that you can visit and the owner will tell you pretty much nothing. You can skip this place entirely. There is a man named Bernard that you can speak to and eventually bribe to help you get into a nightclub and Bouchard's lair. Or, if you just spoke to the cafe owner, which you probably will do since literally everyone you talk to says to go to him. Why don't you try uh, Cafe Metro? What's a Cafe Metro? Nothing, man. Only the biggest loser in Paris. It's a joke. Forget it. The other one, Pierre, worked as a barman. Makes bad deals that backfire on him. He runs the cafe at the Place d'Arcade now. Cafe Metro. You never know. Might be worth a shot. All Bernard says is... Leave me alone, I'm busy! As Laura heads to the nightclub to do a favor for the cafe owner, she sees a sultry soul patch on a sizzling sports bike. He'll be important later. I mean, I, I, I think he was supposed to be important. He's, he's kind of just there. After the nightclub and getting into Bouchard's lair, he tells her to deliver some fake passports for more information. Honestly, when this game is allowed to focus on its story, it's actually pretty darn good. But when you get to the cuts, you can really see how disjointed it can get. After getting blown out of the sewers, Laura finds herself in the Louvre to steal an obscure painting, I think? And finally, about halfway through the game, we finally get into our first tomb, where it starts to feel like a Tomb Raider game again. Eventually, Laura heads back to Von Croy's apartment to look for more clues. Why did you do that in the first place, Laura? Before moving on to Prague because of another murder by the Monstrum. 
After finding a secret bio-research facility filled with man-eating plants and weird experiments, Laura gets trapped in a small room where we find Curtis. From this point of the game, we control Curtis as he navigates an asylum to retrieve one of the obscure paintings the Monstrum had stolen from Laura earlier. After retrieving the painting and releasing Lara, the two bond over exposition and decide to work together. Later, Curtis goes face to face with a mutated version of one of Eckhart, the Monstrum scientists. He dies. From this point of the game, it really feels like they were rushing as quickly as they could to finish the game. Lara finds the remaining paintings and goes face to face with the main villain, which is the most anticlimactic and boring fight of all time. During the final cutscene, we discover that Corel was the main villain all along. Wait, who? Dude, you were in like two cutscenes. Blah blah blah, I was the bad guy all along, join me, oh no, I'm dead, roll credits. The Angel of Darkness was originally going to be the start of a new trilogy as hinted at with this cliffhanger of Curtis not actually being dead, but... Yeah, we all know what happened after this game. Being dead would have been better. While the story is extremely rushed and disjointed, it is actually a surprisingly strong story that fits in genuinely well into the Tomb Raider universe. If Angel of Darkness were to get remade with better controls, better visuals, and much less bugs, it would actually be a solid entry in the Tomb Raider franchise. Firstly, let's address the elephant in the room, the glitches and bugs. Angel of Darkness is notorious for being glitchy and buggy, but is it to the point of game breaking? Surprisingly, no, at least not for me. There is occasional slowdown for no apparent reason. Sometimes ledges can't be grabbed onto depending on where you try, and sometimes Laura will just fall to her death. But all of these can be overlooked and overpassed. Personally, to me, the biggest issue with the game is Laura's new movement and controls. It's trying to be more realistic and fit in with the style, but it just comes off as slow and incredibly clunky. Even her safety dance now feels depressing. Lara feels incredibly weighty, and the biggest change for me was the lack of delay in her jumps. You remember six months ago I mentioned the grid system and how a certain number of grids needed to be cleared for Lara to respond to the jump command? That timing you had to perfect to beat the previous Tomb Raider games, the timing that helped you pull off great sequences of panic when done correctly, all gone. Lara responds almost immediately to her jump, which isn't much of an issue essentially, but towards the end of the game Laura is faced with a timed gauntlet where your timing needs to be precise and one mess up means you have to retry again. Mix this in with Laura's updated sprint mechanic and it's all kinds of irregular timing and unfair deaths. Even though this is only one section in the game, this makes me wonder if they put in more tomb sections in Angel of Darkness, would they also have been infuriating and unfair because of the cramped sections? Speaking of cramped, for some reason, Laura bumps into everything and just dead stops. You could be trying to run a corner or enter a doorway and Laura's foot might barely graze it and she gets stuck. This can happen in some areas where speed is necessary. You'll notice this the most in the apartment complex in the beginning of the game due to all the rubble lying around and the shifting camera angles. The combat in this game has also seen an update. I'm gonna say update and not upgrade. In fact, the only upgraded thing in this whole game is the visuals, and to be fair, they are pretty fun to look at. As for the combat, it's serviceable? Lara loses her trademark twin pistols and is handed instead a shit ton of other weapons, each with their own ammo. Like, you get more ammo than enemies in this game. 
Especially when some enemies can be taken down with one shot. No joke. By the end of the game, I had about 200 plus shotgun shells. But, the shooting is actually kind of fun, especially when Lara gets her machine gun. What's not fun about the combat is Lara's new ability to use melee combat. It's stiff, clunky, and I, I think you only use it, like, I don't know, maybe three times? On top of this is Lara's new stealth mechanics. She can sneak up on enemies and take them out instantly. It's fun and looks nice, but you only get to do this again maybe two or three times. These are the moments where you can really tell so much was cut from the game, and we just get a taste of the bare minimum. I know it's been mentioned many times, and I'm just going to gloss over it real quick, as it's one of the most notorious parts of Angel of Darkness. Laura was given a new upgrade mechanic where performing certain tasks, she would increase her skills, such as she can climb ledges longer, she can jump higher, she can hold her breath longer, but because of the bugs and issues, a lot of them weren't working correctly, so the developers had actually taken them out of the game. There is still moments of it left in the game, but none to the point where it actually feels like your impact is that great. As mentioned earlier, this is a great looking rendition of Lara, even to the point where moving Lara from PS1 to PS2 is perfect. Like you don't even think, oh wow, she got a glow up. Even some recent games have issues with translating characters to newer consoles. Remember Chris in Resident Evil 7? Everything else is filled with detail and well stylized to match the darker theme. Curtis just kind of reminds me of Pete Wentz, which isn't actually a bad thing. I, I, I kind of I kind of dig the edgy look. All right, I'll admit it. I, I really like Curtis and his obscure background of fighting evil with his psychic powers. The end where he dies, I've, I've always wanted to see the continuation since his destructo disc gets up and flies away. Also, his dead body also being gone. Speaking of, the FMVs are now all done in-game, and they're not too bad. It feels like genuine PS2, like the era of PS2, which I really have a soft spot for. Do you like orchestra? Are you depressed? Ask no more, we got you covered. The orchestral style comes back to this game, and as much as I'd love to say that it fits this game perfectly, it kind of blends in a little too well that it doesn't leave much of an impact on you. The music is still good, don't get me wrong, it's just... bland. What does leave a great impact though is Janelle Elliott as Lara for the last time. She has way more lines of dialogue and scripted moments of talking, and she always comes off as respectful while also badass and sometimes even sarcastic or cold. Janelle really defined Lara's personality with her rendition of the character for the last three games. Lost from killing in Prague. Prague? Not a dealer named Vasily. Matthias Vasily? Yes. You knew him? He's connected with what I need to find at von Croy's apartment. I need to go in alone. Okay, I'll wait here. Appreciate it, Bouchard. The rest of the voice acting, which there is a lot, is actually pretty good. Curtis is voiced by Eric Lauren, who has quite a few acting credits under his belt from Horizon Zero Dawn to Devil May Cry. I don't blame him for the corny edgelord style dialogue he has as Curtis, as that's just how sassy Soulpatch is scripted. And I thought this would be one of my easy days. Carrie Shale also makes his final appearance as Werner and does a solid job as always. Look, go and see this woman, Kavi. She can help. I'm going. Egypt, Werner. You walked away and left me. There was no pity then. Get out! Get out of the way! 
overall, is this really the Tomb Raider game that sank the whole franchise and needed to be rebooted with Legend? Honestly, in my own opinion, I really don't think so. Angel of Darkness has some really solid moments and a great story and style that helps Lara's character development. Personally, I think Chronicles is the game that sank the series and Angel of Darkness was supposed to be the life raft that saved it. There are so many what ifs that could have fixed this game. What if the original team came back to work on it? What if they didn't rush production? What if there was proper communication and understanding amongst the team? Regardless, I respect Angel of Darkness because it was the slap in the face that the series needed to get us back to the roots and to what really made Laura a legend. But we'll get to that next time. Overall, and please don't get mad at me for this, but I give Tomb Raider Angel of Darkness four... Leave me alone! I'm busy! ...out of five. It is a genuinely fun game with a good story and decent visuals. If you can look past the bugs and glitches, you will find yourself having a fun time. And I do know that there are even a bunch of fan patches out there which fix a lot of the issues. As for games I would let my son play, I would actually say absolutely. This is the one that I remember playing the most when I was a child and also the one I felt like I made the most progress in when I was really young before I ever needed a guide. Speaking of, uh, for my nostalgia, I actually remember reading the Prima walkthrough guide for this game a lot and noticing the inconsistencies between what they tell you to do and what you can actually do. They were very inconsistent and constantly going against each other. Thank you guys so much for watching, hope you enjoyed. Sorry this video is a little bit late, I've, I've been really busy with a lot of things on my mind these past few weeks, uh, but I was really excited to get to this one. Um, the next one we got is actually the reboot of the Tomb Raider franchise, which is Legend. Looking forward to, to getting to that one. Uh, but, yeah. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, leave a comment down below for games you'd like to see on this channel, or your thoughts on the Tomb Raider uh, franchise and or Angel of Darkness. I actually quite like it, it's one of my favorites. And it really makes me sad because I would love to see what this franchise or what this trilogy really could have been. Hit the subscribe button as it always helps me out and don't forget to ring the bell if you'd like to be notified whenever I create a new upload. And don't forget to check out Ellie's channel down in the description below for more amazing covers. You can follow me on Twitch at Young Dilf Gaming, where you can just chill and chat as I just play pretty much any game that I want to play and usually games that I'm going to review on the channel anyways. So I hope to see you guys there as well. And until I see you guys either in the next video or on my Twitch, I will see you guys on the other side. Bye-bye. It's me and you, boy, and the seers go by. Friendship will never die You're gonna see it's our destiny You got a friend in me You got a friend in me